So now as we continue to look at the traditions of uh, Aikido, there's an important part which is called the showman or the face of the dojo. Uh, there's many different variations of how you can do that. Uh, quite often, especially in the Western culture, you see uh, the Japanese gates called tori, uh, which is a symbol of, they're normally built be just uh, before you enter into the area of a temple so that when you enter through it, it reminds you that you're going from something uh, from casual to the spiritual to something meaningful and for me it also represents that is that when we bow towards it uh, that means we go from our casual state to our training to our development state to, to trying to achieve to become better uh, so this you might quite often find in dojos this is obviously Aikido the kanji and as we go lower our dojo is also a yoga and meditation dojo, so we have various symbols from around the world. There's Indian, Tibetan, and uh, other influences, but uh, this, though, you will find in many dojos. It's called a kamiza. Um, kami means God, za means place, so it's a place of God. It's a sh Since Aikido is influenced deeply by the Shinto tradition, which Osensei, the founder, was very much inspired about, Mm, that he would have those shrines in his uh, showman and many dojos still hold that true to, to this day as well. Uh, it's a symbol of um, entering, the, again, a godly world, a spiritual world, entering something deeper or the other side of the Aikido development. As Osensi used to say, standing of, say, standing of heaven and earth, one foot on ground, one, one foot on earth, I consider the heaven part to be the spiritual part, the self-development part, the, the inner workings of our own life. And uh, again, there's many different interpretations. There's the traditional interpretation as well. But when you bow towards it, you don't necessarily have to be religious. You don't have to believe in something. You can simply see it as a symbol of bowing to something divine, uh, a higher purpose in your life. So that's one way to look at it. So just one thing also to add is that this is more traditional showman or more spirituality and religious based, which is a bit more closer to what Osensi had, but many dojos also have oftentimes the showman just a big Osensi's picture and maybe some other symbols, a sword, a, a joe, but uh, we don't, there's a small picture on our showman, but at the same time, as I mentioned, some dojos have a big picture of a sensei, and that's where they bow, and it's a way to show a sign of respect, gratitude for bringing Aikido. So it depends. There, it doesn't mean one is right, one is wrong, but this is more traditional, um, Japanese tradition-based showman, while if you have a big picture of a sensei, it's more a modern way of just expressing your gratitude towards the teacher. Pretty much in all dojos, before you start the training, there's going to be a short concentration meditation and then a bow in at the beginning of the training and a bow out at the end of the training. So we're going to look at that briefly as well. So the meditation itself, um, again, some might even not call it meditation, some might call it just concentration. And that makes sense. Uh, the way I see it, since, as I also mentioned about the gates, the Tori, there's a sense of going from the casual to to the deeper side of your life, to the training, development. So also from your casual state to your warrior state, to being more present, being more aware, being more active. So already when you step on the mat in many dojos, there's your, it's considered that you should bow at least standing in some dojos, even that you should bow on your knees before, just as soon as you enter on the mat. Some dojos don't ask you that, but it also, it's also that sign of going from the casual to to the training, but uh, pretty much in all dojos, you will have to bow at the beginning of the training together with the instructor. And before that, there is a meditation, and as I called also, you could consider that to be a concentration exercise, which makes sense too. You allow your mind to settle down, you allow yourself to become more calm before you start, so that uh, as the old um, Asian saying says, that as if there's a cup which is full, you won't be able to add anything to it. So you first of all have to let spill out whatever is in the cup or drink it, so you could then add something. So that meditation can be considered in the beginning as that. 
that you empty out the cup, you allow yourself to calm down, forget what happened be before, forget what's gonna happen after, and just uh, as you calm, calm down, you become ready to enter the state of training and receive new information. At the end of the training, there's a lot of information you got into the cup, and in a sense, you can start, you, you do a small meditation to start to drink it, to start to digest it, to allow it to settle in, to feel what you did learn, and to let the system summarize it. So it's, it's a good exercise. It's definitely worth doing. In some of the dojos, uh, the instructor is going to say, Mokuso, uh, it's one way of, of oh, it's a specific, of, specific meditation, and uh, some, some dojos will clap, before you start meditation, we use, a, uh, we use a bell for it. So there's different ways, but the meditation itself, uh, you can sit either cross-legged or on your knees. You can, place the, uh, you can place the hands on the knees, or there's also a traditional mudra, which is oftentimes used in, in Aikido dojos. It's uh, the right hand placed on the left one, thumbs connecting together, bringing them to the center. In terms of the meditation itself, there's many different meditations you can do. You can, uh, oftentimes, dojos will um, ask you to focus on the center, or on the hara, which is uh, two fingers down the, uh, the belly button, four fingers in, just a, just a general way of allowing you to re realize where it is. Uh, some dojos will ask you to do a misogi breathing exercise where you Breathe in through the nose, allow um, the air to go through your back, to circle in the hara, in the center again, and to breathe out through the mouth. Uh, other dojos will just ask you to be silent with your eyes closed, so there's different ways. It's best that you figure out uh, which way is uh, taught in that dojo, and when you visit a dojo or you train in, in your local dojo, that you follow their way, just to respect that tradition and to learn what they're teaching. Mm. But, in general, the, the direction is going to be a similar direction. So when it's over, again, somebody might clap or just uh, give a, a pronunciation of that the meditation is over. And as soon as it's over, the instructor is going to turn towards the showman. You might be sitting there as you are sitting. So the, but the bow is going to be pretty much the same. So again, it depends on the tradition, it depends on the, on the, also on the showman which you have, what bow you're going, going to have. More often when there's a picture of a sensei, when it's not a Shinto-based uh, showman, uh, it's oftentimes just, it can be just a simple bow or bringing the hands together, one bow, and then the instructor turns towards you and then you bow to the instructor. In the more traditional way, uh, and the, the way a sensei used to bow in, what we do in our dojo too, uh, we put the hands together, there's one deep bow, then you go out, bring the hands together again, there's another deep bow, you come back, there's a mm, loud clap with both hands as you release them and you bring them back together, one, two, that happens faster, it's one, two, then you bow again, you allow yourself to feel a connection with the showman. Then the instructor turns around, bows towards you. Most of the times, the students will just stay in a bow, bow position waiting for the instructor to turn. Sometimes they will both bow to each other. So again, as I mentioned, there's different dojos, so I'm just giving a general feeling of what you can expect. But most of the times, if you follow that dojo, you will figure out easily what they're expecting from you. And at the end of the bow, at the beginning of the training, normally we say onegai shimas, which uh, so in karate you hear sometimes os, which is a uh, short version of onegai shimasu. Um, there's no direct translation of what onegai shimas means, um, but it's more of an asking of a favor. So you could interpret it as a way of saying, please help me develop, please help me train, please teach me. And the instructor said that to uh, the students, the students to the instructor. In some dojos, you use the same phrase when you bow to each other. So, but it's it's a way of asking a favor of another person. Anagai shimas. So the last point before we continue to the next topic is the bow itself. The two times bowing 
two times clap. Um, there is, a, if you're interested enough, you can find a very deep, long-rooted traditions based on religion, what this practice means. Uh, one of the interpretations that I've heard and I really liked is that the two bows, two claps, represent the yin and yang, which Osensei was inspired about based on the Tao, Taoist teachings. So you bow to your masculine part and your feminine part, you bow to the good inside of yourself and the bad inside of yourself, to the two energies, to the receptive and active, to try to find the balance between them. And it's a, it's a great representation that when you bow, you don't need to consider that you're bowing to some god or to some Shinto deity. It's more about, uh, especially in these modern days in the Western world, you can consider it to be more of a reminder of yourself that you have to balance out your life. You have to find, you come to Aikido to balance your life, to find more balance. And that clap, that bow can just remind you of that. So that's one way to look at it. Obviously, if you're interested, you can look at the tradition, you can find a deeper meaning or more complex meaning, but that's one way to interpret it too. The very last moment to mention uh, before continuing is at the end of the class, normally the process is going to be identical or maybe there's not going to be a meditation, but still you're going to bow it in the same way, but just the phrase is going to be different. You say, Domo arigatou which uh, these are four words. Uh, domo means thank you in Japanese. It's a light version. Arigato is a, is a higher version of thank you. And gozaimashita is a way to emphasize that. So basically when you say domo arigato gozaimashita, that means thank you tremendously. Thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much. You show a deep sign of gra gra gratitude for the instructor, for showing for his teachings, and then you bow. So the, you, first of all, you say to the instructor as you bow, and then in most of dojos, you come together with the partners you trained, you bow to them, and you say the same, which means thank you very much for helping me train, thanking you for lending your body, lending your energy, lending your knowledge. Um, so basically we say a deep thank you to everyone who we trained with, to the instructor, and then the class finishes.